Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be going through how to prepare a Blood Bowl League. So I've been putting together a League Commissioner pack as we're playing a new Blood Bowl League in my local game meetup club. And so I thought it would be fun to put together something that you could use if you wanted to put together a Blood Bowl League in your club or with your group of friends. So I've done it as a keynote file and I'll put a link in the description down below where you can download that for free. I've also done a PowerPoint option but as I have designed this in Keynote using shapes and things, it might not transfer that well to PowerPoint. So you might have to adapt it a little bit, but the table should all work. So that should be fine. So the pack is going to give you all the tables you need to run the league and keep track of some vital stats and things like that. So there's going to be three league versions to go through and they're all based around the Blood Bowl second season edition game. And so whatever version you go with, each player will choose a team and they'll need a team draft list. Now, this team draft list is available from the Warhammer community site and in the file, which you can also get as a PDF, actually, I'll put three different versions for you to get hold of. You can click the link in the PowerPoint, the keynote or the PDF, and that will take you to the Warhammer community site where you can download this team draft list document for free, print it off, and then you can use that in your club. So that's available for you to use and share from Warhammer Community Site. And of course, because everything I'm including here is free, it's all for personal use. Um, we can't sell it or anything like that. So there we go. And so let's get started with League version one. Now this is designed for 10 games each, perfect for up to like say 12 players. I think this version would be really fun to play. So first up, you're going to need a league table and you can see here we've got a column running down with all the team names. So once you've chosen the names for your teams, you'll fill all this out correctly and then put the coach name as well. And then just like with any sports league, you've got played, won, drawn, lost. But with kill team, we're going to be doing some damage. There's going to be casualties. There's going to be mayhem and murder. So let's keep track of those casualties for and against and then a difference. Also touchdowns, we want to keep a record of that. Touchdowns for and against and the difference and then the total difference. And finally, how many points you get for winning the game and for any other bonuses. Now I'm playing Snotlings, so I expect to see this stat line coming up quite often. Now let's go down and have a look at how the points are going to work. Now for all the versions we go through in the video, the league scoring is going to be the same. For every win, you'll get three points. For a draw, you'll get one point. If you lose, losers get nothing. Then for optional, if you score three or more touchdowns, it's one league point. I think this is quite fun to do. So I would say include this because why not? Be, be good, wouldn't it? Then we've got concede no touchdowns. It's one league point. Cause three or more casualties. It's a league point. So you could just be playing not for the win, just to cause as many casualties as you can on the opponent's side. I think that'd be really fun to do. Another form I'm going to be using is games play. This is just nice as the league commissioner to track the games, make sure everyone has been able to play each other. And in this league version, there's going to be 11 or 12 teams. And so if you're playing each other once, you're going to get um, 10 or 11 games each in total. So if you're running this over a 10 or 12 week period, I think that's really cool. People can get those games in in their own time, let you know they've played provide you with the stats from the game and then you can update these different tables. So just pop a P in when everyone's played and then when this is complete, you know the league is finished. Now we've got results. I'd like to put down the, the teams that played each other and the score. I might put a date column in there. You might want to do that. That, that could be quite handy actually. But um, yeah, all you need is the team v team and the score. Just nice to have a results table to post and share with everyone playing in the league. Another table that I think would be fun is the player stats table. And so here you've got the player from each of the teams. So you can have player, then their team, then the coach. So the player in this case would be the different models. And it's fun to keep track of how many kills they make, how many intercepts, and also how many touchdowns each player makes. So that could be quite interesting. And again, a nice table just to share with the group to keep everyone excited, interested, and having something to aim for. Maybe you'll look at this table and you want to get your player to the top. So you might try and get some more kills with them, some more touchdowns, things like that. So I think this is going to be a really fun table to include in the league. Now for this version, once you've played all the games, I think it's going to be really straightforward just to end it there. Don't go into a playoff or anything and then just go whoever's um, top, second and third, 
they'll get the prizes. And of course, whoever gets last is going to get something. Um, you've got to recognise the biggest loser from the league for sure. I think that'll be funny. And there's no way the Snotlings are going to be at the top. This is just for an example. So for this league, you get the league champion, the second place, and then the third place. Losers got to get a wooden spoon of some kind. And then why not give little prizes for whoever gets the most kills, whoever gets the most touchdowns, whoever gets the most intercepts. And this could be based on the team or the player. That's up to you. So that covers version one. Now let's have a look at league version two. And again, this is designed around 10 to 11 games each. But if you've got 12 players and you want to split it into two divisions, then you're going to need something a little bit different. So we've got this laid out exactly the same, uh, played, won, drawn, lost, etc. and all the points. But now we're going to have two divisions with six players in each, or six teams, sorry, in each division. The scoring is going to be exactly the same. But here, instead of playing each other once, you're going to play each other twice. So you can have a home match and an away match. So you can end up playing 10 games still, but only against five other teams. So if you're the halflings, you're going to play each of these five teams twice. And you just pop a P in there to so you know that it's been played. You could also put H and A, so home and away matches if you wanted to. That could be quite fun. But that's really up to you. It's just really to keep track of who's played so you know all the games have been carried out. Then you've got the results table the same as before. And then here, all the player stats keep going with that with the kills, intercepts and the touchdowns. And then we'd have a different way to work out who wins. So this is a fun reason to do this different thing and splitting it into the divisions because then you could have a little kind of playoff tournament style at the end where you'd have the winner of Division 1 going up against the winner of Division 2 to see who would be the Blood Bowl League champion overall. And then the loser of that game would end up getting second place. So nice and simple. And then the second place from Division 1 would go up against second place from Division 2. And then they would get third place for the overall league. And then prizes, same league champion, second place, third place. Biggest loser gets a spoon and let's do those prizes for kills, touchdowns and intercepts again. Right, that's version two. So a little bit different because it just adds a little twist by taking the winners and runners up from each division and having them play each other to see who's the overall champion. So that could be quite interesting and a fun way to do it as well. Now let's have a look at league version three. So this is designed where you've got a lot more players. Maybe you've got 16 players or more. I mean, even up to 24, you could do like this and you want to split them up. So you'll have division one, division two, and this could be four teams or up to six teams in each division like I've got here. Then you'd have division three and division four. Points are going to be exactly the same. You'll be tracking how many games are played for each of the four divisions and then you'll be recording all the results as normal for the team v team and their score. And then you're probably going to find with this, there's a lot more games going on. So you'll need a couple of these sheets. So yeah, just duplicate this particular slide in the keynote and then you have as many as you need. And then keep track of the player stats as normal. But now with 16 plus players in four divisions, you're going to have a winner and a runner up for each. There's going to be eight teams. And so I thought, why not do a tournament style playoff where the first and second place from each division all go into a hat and then you pull out those names at random and have the eight teams all going up against each other. The winners of those four games would move into the quarterfinals, then the winners of the quarterfinals into the semis, and then finally in the final with the winner being the champion, the loser of that final game getting second place, and then down here, loser Q from QF QF2 game would go up against the loser of QF3 QF4 game and then they would be the third place overall for the league. So a few more games you'd be playing the same in each division but you would potentially have one, two, what, three, four games more that you would have to play out if you got into the playoffs. So that could be quite fun. You're playing against each other in the division to get in that top one and two spot. That'd be quite interesting. If you make it, you get into the playoff and get to play people from the other divisions in a little tournament. So that could be a really cool way to go about it. And then you've got the 
different prizes. League champion second, third again as normal. Loser gets a spoon. Everyone who's done something cool with kills, touchdowns and intercepts would also get a medal. So there we go. That's all three versions that I've put together in this league commissioner pack. And hopefully this is going to help you to get a league going so you don't have to replicate all these forms or build them like I've had to do for our group. So there we go. Hope it helps. You've got the keynote and PowerPoint version and a PDF as well. And this is going to have everything in there that you need to keep track of. Now, the players are going to have to do some things too, though. They're going to have to keep record of their different games on their team draft list. So that it's important that they do keep those records and you get them from them so you can keep updating these forms. And the good thing about playing like this and playing a league is as long as everyone knows who they've got to play and you're posting regularly to keep them updated, then they can arrange those games in their own time. They don't have to play on a meetup, which is brilliant because sometimes people can't make those meetups. So it's awesome that they could then play in their own time and then just send you a copy of their team draft list from the game, maybe, or just the stats you need for your forms. So you could even put together your own form with just the information you want to get hold of. So that could be quite cool. For me, I'm interested in seeing how the game went. So I'd like to see the whole team draft lists just for fun maybe you can pick stuff out make some little posts about it keep the league alive and interesting with regular updates and little snippets from games maybe even little commentary quotes that'd be really cool or ask the players if anything that was particularly interested happened during the game get them to take photos maybe like a little video and then post that on your group too so all things like that are going to keep the league alive keep it interesting keep it fun I'm really excited to get playing Blood Bowl. I've wanted to do something like this for a long time, playing a league. Didn't expect to be the league commissioner, but there you go. I'm pretty happy to do it. It's fun to get things organised, create forms like this and um, yeah, do the social media behind it as well. Because I think that's a big part of the league, keeping it fun and keeping lots of content and updates going so everyone knows exactly what's happening and they're all enjoying themselves. But if you haven't played Blood Bowl yet but would like to give it a go, definitely can recommend this second season edition. I've done an unboxing video on the channel already. Did that last year. Um, such a good set, packed with so many cool things. I love the books, the artwork, the playfulness of the game. And it's totally different from any of the other Warhammer games because it really is just crazy and it's all about fun. It's not about winning. Um, you, the, you can just lose so badly and especially playing Snotlings or some of the, the different teams. So yeah, it's not about winning. It's about just killing the enemy and just doing as much damage and mayhem as you possibly can. So I think that's great fun. And if you want to pick up a copy of this second season edition, then I'd recommend checking out Firestorm Games and a big thanks to them for sponsoring the channel and helping me to keep going with these daily videos. Really appreciate that support. I'll put a link to their website down below and you can save up to 20% on all your hobby products, including Blood Bowl, but not just Warhammer. You can get Star Wars there, loads of other games, all your paints from the different companies and everything like that too. So well worth a look. And if you're in Cardiff or any of the other locations where they've got stores, definitely check out those stores. The Blood Bowl, sorry, not Blood Bowl, the Firestorm Games shop in Cardiff is just awesome. So yeah, can highly recommend it. And then if you want a team, you can get your team there as well. If you're in Liscard, Cornwall, check out the Little Shop DVD and Games. That's my local club. That's where we run the games every Wednesday. So if you're down and want to play, come and join in. We play Warhammer 40k, uh, Warcry, Kill Team, anything you like. So come and have fun. Join in. And um, also you can pick up the Blood Bowl set and some teams there too. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a good idea about how to prepare a Blood Bowl League. I really enjoyed making it. I can't wait to get started playing some games in the league myself. It's going to be awesome fun and I hope you have fun with your league too. So thanks so much for watching. If you did like the video, please hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit the notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>